Well, hello guys, and welcome to episode 3 of the Kerbal Space Program. I am going to, in this video, start to build the space station that I promised that I would build. And Because I did ask you guys what should I build next, a space station, or should I go to the moon, or some other planets, and overwhelmingly, I have to say, you all voted to build a space station, so that's what we're going to do. Now, we, I think what we're going to do with this one is we're going to start off with an unmanned space station. So, the whole point of this is to get part one of the space station up. And I think I'm going to focus on getting the basics up there. Which means, the first section is going to have things like lots of batteries on it. Uh, solar panels for the batteries. It's going to have some lights so that we can see it when we're docking. It's obviously going to have docking points on for the future parts we'll put on there. And it will have some RCS tanks. Now... I've not explained RCS yet, uh, the reaction control system, but I will do that. RCS basically makes it a lot easier to maneuver or your your pieces around in space, uh, where obviously there's no kind of um, there's no air, so there's no <laughs> you can't use wings, so you have to use something else. So you use little jets, if you like, that push you around. That's what the RCS system does, and I'll show you that. But the first part, like I say, is going to be unmanned. So I'll probably start off with one of these because you have to start off with a pod pretty much and this is the remote guidance unit there are two sizes of this that's the smaller one but I'm going to use the big one so let's take this up here so this allows us to control the rocket remotely if you like so that we don't need a little little Kerbal in there little Kerbin in there um, piloting so on top what I'm thinking is I'm going to have the main structure underneath here with um, a docking system that will have points going off in all directions down there that that will then be the where the structure will build from down here and up top I thought I would kind of taper in to another docking point and that's where ships can come in to just connect if they want to refuel so this will be the um, the top end of the ship docking area if you like so what we need to do is we need to taper that a bit thinner so let's spin that round don't forget you can use the WASD QE keys to spin objects round let's clamp that on top like that and then we'll have a structural structural fuselage which will sit on top there I don't know why it does that it's really weird so it clipped in at the first go so we'll do that next and then so the docking point will sit on the top here now if we go to uh, utility this is the Clampertron docking port. There are two. There are, there's a junior version, which is quite a small one. I'll just click on that, you'll see it's quite a small docking point. This is the one you want. Um, this one can deal with um, docking vessels, and you can attach vessels to it. Just click on top there. So when a vessel comes in with one of those on front, so it can, it, these are kind of magnetic. So when the ship comes in, it'll well, if you get close enough, they'll magnetically clamp. And it'll sit there and you can then even do things like transfer fuel between the space station and your ship and we'll do that in later videos we'll make this a floating space station with fuel tanks on it and uh, obviously when we've used fuel it means you can bring rockets up refuel them at the space station and then go on a long journey come back uh, and then obviously you'll need to put fuel back into the space station but that's quite easy done by a short mission uh, up with some fuel tanks so that's that's the top half of it. Uh, let's go for a, a storage container underneath. So now we're getting into the body of this. Uh, now we'll have the RCS, I think. So if we go down to propulsion, um, which one do we want? Uh, this one, I think. Yep, this one. So we'll have these are RCS fuel tanks. Now RCS is is what's called mono propellant. You can just see it there on the resources. That's different to rocketry fuel, the jet fuel. Uh, this is special kind of um, monopropellant for the for the RCS system, which you'll see in a sec when I when I start putting the RCS thrusters on here. There are choices over what thrusters you use. Uh, now, last but not least, as before we taper down, we need a control. Sorry, we need an advanced SAS module of the right size, which I think is this one, that one, a large one. Yeah, there you go. Remember the advanced SAS module, you'll need one of them, but that lets you uh, control the ship by pressing T, The kind of an autopilot if you like. Press T and the, when you're flying it will stay on that course. 
it'll use your control services and vector thrusts and everything else it can just to stay on course so it's quite useful you don't have to have this um, you could fly the rocket purely manually but I find it kind of useful entirely up to you as I've said before play sims how you want now let's go for a uh, utility what are we after here My apologies. Ah, that's what I'm after. The the Rocker Max brand adapter. Uh, so this basically converts one size down to another. Uh, we could do it with those little things there, but I kind of thought that that would look quite cool. It's a bit of bit of a difference, bit of a different way of tapering back in, and it makes it look kind of cool, I think. Anyway, uh, now on the bottom we want one of these, a multi-point connector. So we'll just clamp that on there. Okay, so you can see that this is going to be where the rest of the structure will build from. There's going to be four around here and one going off in that direction. So obviously I'll build another uh, long one of these pieces down here. We'll come down this way. I, don't, I have no idea how big I'm going to build this space station. Um, each piece that I put on it, I guess, will be focused on different things, different aspects of the space station. And by all means, I really do encourage you to... Um, leave me comments and post ideas um, onto Facebook and YouTube let me know what you think I should do next and uh, quite happy to to build this as a group effort if you like so send me suggestions I'm all for suggestions or even pictures of pieces that you've done yourself you know and say oh this looks quite cool um, but obviously we're gonna have a, a habitat section and uh, we'll have fuel sections power science you know all the different kind of areas that a space station would have um, I'm waffling let's get on with it we want some uh, one thing you must do is put that's no good that's not a clamping point you can't dock to this uh, you still need to remember to put these clampertron docking ports on the uh, now they can be a little touch fiddly to put on you need to rotate them in place like that and then click them in there um, I could probably have just done that easier with a quad can I do a quad no okay it's not letting me do it's not playing ball um, one at a time it is so there's the first one and the second one you're not playing are you get the rotation right there we go so you've got to use the WASD keys to to rotate these things around make sure you don't put them on that way that's the wrong way that's the way you want so that this kind of smaller flange is on the outside and the bigger one is on the inside touching the main point there just just rotate just just press the keys until you get the right rotation there we go that's four and don't forget the one down here uh, that's upside down it's one that way there we go so you can see that is th that's the that's the crux of it that's the core of what i'm going to do i think uh everything else is going to be about getting this up in the air and extra bells and whistles we, we want to put on now so one of the first things I'm going to do is put on the batteries uh, I'm going to go with these things here so there's there's different sizes of batteries you can go for uh, circular batteries but I'm just going to go for these now what I found about these batteries is they have a high electric charge they have a hundred each which is quite nice but I'm going to stack them up I want a lot of power on the space station so I don't want to bring in more batteries back later um, but they have these little green lights on them which is kind of handy in space when you go around the dark side of the planet these little lights look really cool so what I'm going to do is I'm going to rotate them around like that and then press X to symmetry mode and we're going to go for quads probably there like that so I've got the green lights pointing outwards so if you're at this end you'll see these nice little green lights when we get up here I'll switch it around and point the green upwards and you'll see it lights up in space it looks really cool um, Okay, so if I hover over that and hold the Alt key, that will then, Alt key and then click the mouse, that will duplicate, and it will remember the symmetry that I chose as well, which is really handy. So I can just go like this now. Uh, just click on the, hold the Alt key, click again, and so on. Now I think what I'm going to do is I'm going to turn them round in a second. Let's do one more. And then we'll rotate these and go the other way. I don't want to. I don't want to go over that joint really. I might just adjust this in a second. 
get them all in place. There we go. Let's just move that up. Cool. So these bank of green lights, no matter which direction you look at this thing from, you're going to see some green lights. And it's going to look, you know, that's nice and dark. It's going to look a bit like that. So cool. Uh, and also, I thought I'd put some up here as well. Well, just the one, I think. But seeing as this is the about uh, not too close to the front, about there, I think. So as you bring in your ship in, you'll see these four green lights, which can be useful if you're docking at night. I don't really want to put lights shining in your face because the last thing you want is big bright lights shining at you, but little green lights to help guide you in, I thought might be kind of useful. Um, that's all the batteries you want to put on. So the next thing we're going to put on is the RCS control. That's not under here, that's under control. Uh, you've got some options here. Uh, you've got these little linear ports which point in one direction. I'm going to use these. Uh, these are uh, four directional jets that you can see and again I'm going to put them in quad symmetry mode like that so like there we go so if you if I zoom in you can see what I mean you don't strictly speaking need four I could probably get away with two to be honest um, but you can see they've got little nozzles that point in the different directions and when you activate the directional keys the RCS system will basically fire jets to, to get the thing to, to move in that direction. Now the important thing about the placement of these is if you bring up the center of gravity of this thing, what you want, of course, is you want your RCS thrusters to be, if you like, as far away from the center of gravity so they're acting, so they can rotate the thing easily. If you put the, the RCS thrusters here, you'll find it very hard to turn this thing around. But put them out here, they've got a lot more moments, a lot more circular um, uh, leverage, or leverage if you're from America. Um, they can just turn around the center of gravity a lot easier. So that's, that's up there, that's nice and far away from the center of gravity. Now the ones down here are a problem. I don't really want to put them on these docking ports if possible. I mean, I could squeeze them on there like that. Um, but I'm just worried they're going to get in the way. You can see they're clipping. They're not. They're not happy down there. So I could there. It won't let me here. Here possibly, but then they're pointing the wrong direction. So I think what I'm going to do, and I'm going to line them up with those above, is put them. Oh, that's not right, is it? What's it done? What you done? There we go. Like that, which is not ideal. But the the idea is that this thing won't be rotating that much anyway. Once the structure builds up, it'll be whatever's coming in will have to do the spinning around to orientate itself. But in the first few pieces, it can be useful to be able to control and move this thing. Um, but that's just some general principles of RCS. Ideally, you'd have it down here. And in future um, modules that I bring in, if I don't need a quad, then I'll put the thruster down that end. Okay, so that's that. Um, I think what would be nice is to have, under science, to have one of these, which is a extendable high-gain antenna. I don't need four of them, though, so let's bring that down to one. Let's put it here somewhere like that. So when we're, when we're up, we'll be able to just extend that, and it'll open up into a circular dish, which looks kind of cool. Nice to have a nice little dish here. Uh, one thing we do need, though, is to recharge these batteries, uh, and for that we're going to need solar panels, uh, which are under, oops, that's under the I-beam, sorry, utility, totally forgetting where things are, solar array, I think that's the one I want, yep, so press X to get double symmetry, try and get it right on that blue circle, there you go, so they will now extend outwards from here. I don't want them to be too near the docking port. Obviously you've got your ship coming in here. I don't want you smashing into the solar panels. So they're, they're kind of nice there. And they're well out of the way of the rest of the structure. Good. Um, what else do we want? Do we want anything else? Yes. I, we do want something else. Let's turn the sensor gravity off a second. Right. Now I am using a couple of mods which I will link in the video description. One of them is essential if you want to build along with me, and that's it's called rocketry. 
Uh, what it does, because you may have noticed, I've got a whole bunch more engines and rockets here. Lots of more, lots of more components in my Lego box to play with. It's called rocketry, and it gives you a lot of really cool and exciting stuff, um, which I'm going to show you how to use some of it. The other thing is um, um, an add-on called MechJeb, which is a very popular add-on. However, it is it does split the people into opinion. Now, you can use MechJeb as you want, but essentially what MechJeb does is it gives you a ton of information about your ship, uh, about the, the maneuvers it's making, the direction it's going, even things like the thrust to weight ratio. However, MechJeb also effectively allows you to autopilot so that you can say, I want you to take off, uh, I want you to circularize my orbit around Kerbin perfectly, and then I want you to plan a maneuver to moon and orbit me there, and you know, go on and on and on. Effectively takes away all of the manual side for you, even things like docking. Again, it's up to you if you install MechJeb, it's up to you how you use MechJeb. I'll leave that to you. Um, I will use it, I will use aspects of it uh, as I see fit. And, but one of the things you need to do if you want to use MechJeb, this is an optional step by the way if you're building along with me, um, you need this. Under the control you need the MechJeb component so if you drop that in like that you'll notice we immediately get the MechJeb window up and we've got some vessel information down here which we'll use later. That will give us things like the crew capacity and the thrust to weight ratio. So it's saying crew capacity 4 because that's a crew container that can hold 4 people. The surface thrust to weight ratio is zero because we haven't put any rockets down here, so there's no thrust. We've, we've got um, a mass of 14 tons that you can see there, but we've got no thrust. So just putting that on here can be extremely useful when you're designing rockets just to give you an idea of if you've got too much weight and not enough power. Very, very useful. So I'm going to leave that on there, but when I uh, give you links to this, this whole ship so that you can fly this thing up into space or customize it, I'll give you uh, two variations. One will have this component on it, and one won't, quite simply. Um, that way you, you're not dependent on it in order to load it up. So if you want the MechJeb version, load, make sure you install MechJeb and then um, put this on. MechJeb will also be linked, as will Rocketry in my video. This is MechJeb 2.08, so you must have 2.08 and above in order to load this um, rocket that I will save in. Anyway, that's enough waffle. Now we've got to carry on with the next bit. The next bit is to build the rocket that will put this into space. Now, first things first, um, we are going to need our second stage. Sorry, our third stage. So, first stage is going to be, uh, you know, main thrust rocket and side rockets. So, the first stage will will release the side rockets. Uh, the next stage is the main stage, which gets us out into the atmosphere. We'll release that and we'll use a smaller final stage to manoeuvre us into our circular orbit. That's the plan. Now what I want to do is try and make a design here that I can reuse for all of the components that we're going to fly up into orbit to make the space station. So I need to get this design right. Uh, we'll probably have to make some adjustments on the way. No doubt we'll end up using uh, these strut connectors to, to hold things in place because th this has a habit of wobbling around as you're taking off. It's all right when you're in space, but when you're taking off, this thing oscillates around, and you tend to need struts and, and lines to just hold hold it still, uh, which kind of makes it look a little bit ugly, but there's nothing we can do about that. Um, we have no other way of clamping this thing into a rigid body. So we'll have to put up with it, I'm afraid. Now, let's get on with it. Uh, propulsion, I'm going to need a... Um, 800, 400 should be enough fuel, I hope. I uh, don't want to put that on, I don't want to... Actually what I want to do is build the casing around this. Now this is a a rocketry add-on. Uh, is it on the next page? Sorry. I've forgotten where it is, good grief. Where are you? Seriously. Aerodynamic. Okay, so to the aerodynamic tab, you will find some loads of more stuff. What does all this do? Well, all this, what this is going to do is going to nice and neatly wrap this up uh, and make it so that the casing can fall away. It's all rather cool. 
Um, there are different kinds of things that you can use here. You've got these 3.75 meters furring bases, two kinds. One's a furring base, one's an expanded furring base. So one's if you want a narrow fit, the other one is if you want an expanded fit around your payload. Uh, these are 3.75 meters, there's then 2.5 and finally a 1.25. So you've got a lot of options. And then all of this stuff around it is effectively making the nose cone and, and outer casings around it. So that's what all of this bit does at the top. We are going to use a, I think, 2.5. So we click the 2.5 expanded, and we're going to, if you look at the circle at the bottom, the little connector, we're going to clap, clip that on there like that. Okay. So that's going to stay on, and we're going to build the casing around it. Now, the way rocketry works, don't ask me why, the way it works, you've got to build the nose section first. So you build the top and the bottom, and then you come around the sides. It took me a while to work that one out. Um, so we're using 2.5 meters, so we need to find the 2.5 meter expanded cone half. Okay, so if you're using that one, you'd want the normal cone, but we're using the expanded, so we need expanded cone. Very important to keep the things matched up, otherwise they don't work. So we click on that, and what you have to do, you see this kind of dot on the left side? We need to align it with one of these dots here, one of the four dots. So that's going to be too high, that is the one we want, I think. Press X to go into double symmetry and click. And there we go. That's a really, really tight fit, which is perfect for what we need. So the other pieces we need now are the 2.5 expanded side fairing, which is that one. Press X to, oh, we're in symmetry, that's fine. Uh, now, you don't use the outer side dots now. You now use the bigger inner dots. Can you see the one at the bottom of the nose cone? That's why you want those there again very important so click that and then do the same thing one more time and there you go and I think you gotta admit that looks so sweet it looks so much better and like it looks like a proper rocket I think it's cool right I've made some minor adjustments um, some of the things I've done is I put the, put these lights on here just pointing outwards but I've also I kinda gone back on what I said a little bit about these lights up here um, I've put two there because I figured it would be better to, if you're coming in like this, and you can see these four green dots in the dark, it would be better to illuminate this circle, this surface area here. And it also might look quite kind of nice once you've got this dish on there. So I'm not sure what it's going to look like, but I figure that will be better. We've got a ton of batteries on here, so it really doesn't matter about driving these, these lights. However... What I want to show you really is this rocket section that I've built down here. So I'm going to take you through that. Let's put this back on here first. Like so. Okay, so as you notice, this is not standard components. These components come from rocketry. You do need rocketry if you want to load in this rocket. Remember the download links are in the video description. So what we've got is the main fuel tank. We've got one of these things, a 10,000 litre fuel tank. It's just the same as this standard KW. Um, is this a KW? No, that's the normal one. I'm talking rubbish. That's the normal jumbo fuel tank that has 2,800 in it. You can see the size difference. This bad boy has, there's two versions of it, an orange one and a white one. This has... 10,000, almost 11,000 uh, litres of fuel, assuming that's litres, that's a massive amount of fuel, and on top I've stuck another one uh, for 2,700 litres of fuel, so that's given us a grand total of, what, 13,700 litres of fuel, a lot of fuel. At the bottom here is a gigantic engine, this thing here, it's the uh, Griffin XX, it's the biggest rocket in rocketry. Now normally you would fly with the mainsail which puts out 1500 uh, power but that's only as big as this one here which puts out 1700 power, a little bit more on this one but compare that to the one I'm packing which packs out 3800 power, it's a huge amount of power which was why I've got massive fuel tanks, it takes a lot of fuel. However that should be enough to um, do most of what we need except I've got some solid rocket boosters on the side. Uh, these are pretty big uh, solid rocket boosters, these things here. Uh, they're called the Globe X5 Thors. Check out 850 power each. They are twin mounted on the side there. 
with those uh, decouplers. There's two of those decouplers. And then there are three heavy struts here, these things. Three heavy struts just holding them in place. Those decouplers have enough oomph. These decouplers here, the manifolds, 450 decoupling force. They've got enough oomph to snap those struts when they push those um, boosters away. So we don't need to worry about that. That takes care of the upward thrust, of which there is quite a bit. If we just bring in Mech Jeb and bring up the vessel info, you can see whilst we're on the surface, we're weighing th 313 tons. Most of that is fuel, to be honest. Gives us a 1.79 thrust to weight ratio. Not a lot. Ideally, you'd be looking for at least two. But once this thing gets going, you'll find the mass drops quite rapidly as the fuel is burned and the thrust to weight ratio soon takes off. So shouldn't be too much of a problem. I have got under the aerodynamics second take second tab. You've got the AVR8 winglets. I've got these set up in quad fashion. If we just bring up the center of mass a second, uh, you'll see that I've got a quad down here and a quad uh, just up here. So we've got one set below the center and another set just above. And that that between them they will allow us to uh, rotate the aircraft and keep it straight. So the idea of that is obviously to fly in a straight line, but also to allow us to make our turn as we uh, choose our path into orbit. Holding all that together, um, the problem with these, these tall kind of payloads is they tend to wobble, so they tend to oscillate a lot. So I've got these four braces here sticking out, of which I've attached struts into um, the main part. If I can just detach this, actually. Can I just detach that on its own? No, hang on. It will let you do this if you click on just the right place. And I do mean that sincerely. <laughs> this editor is all about clicking on just the right place. Let's just pull them to one side a sec. There we go. So you see I've attached these, uh, if you look under structural, the uh, uh, these things, the I-beam pocket edition. So there's four of those stuck around the side and then a strut cable attaches up as high as you can to hold the payload in place so that tension holds the thing from from wobbling all over the place and that works quite well uh, and that's pretty much it let's pull that back oops of course now we need to go with twin symmetry like so that holds the whole thing in place we have a couple of launch um, helpers if you like these things to hold the thing in place in terms of staging okay staging the solid rocket boosters and the um, stability enhancers and the rocket all fire at the same time. So we'll max the thrust out, hit space, boom, the whole thing will take off in one go. After that, uh, stage three is to hit these decouplers and release the solid rocket boosters. After that, we are into releasing, there's a separator there which is releases the bottom half here away from the top section and also fires up these four engines so at this point we should be able to get ourselves more or less into um, a very good orbit will be almost circular and we'll f we'll detach use these four engines to go into a circular orbit and the rest of this we should fall away because uh, it should just deorbit out we shouldn't be in a circular orbit at that point so that will deorbit away and then finally after that we're into releasing the actual payload out of this upper section and then we'll put the lights on, extend the solar panels, and see what it all looks like. Okay, so that is the rocket. Let's see if she flies. Let's get her into orbit, shall we? Unfortunately, we've run out of time. In the next video, don't miss it, I shall basically take this rocket, and I'm going to put it into orbit, put the space station into orbit, and show you it all lit up in glorious detail, about 100 kilometers over the surface of Kerbin. Anyway, that's it for this video. Take care, guys, and happy trekking.